I had great freedom in this house because I've always felt free to paint and create as I wish. Welcome to the Copper Penny. I write on the wall. I don't use or employ pastels to any extent. Copper tones I see as an extension of the penny itself. You have to begin there, and like the penny, you've got to start there to get to that dollar. Well, I am a true Colombian because I was born here just down the street from the governor's mansion on Laurel Street, educated here, taught here 40 years, and I'm, I'm living in a house that I moved in a long time ago in the 60s. My husband was uh, in the military when uh, I was a sophomore in college, and we met and married and moved here. That can of orange paint was purchased for me after a long search by Ron, and I appreciated it very much, and I showed that I did by painting the entire, this entire area through here was a bright orange, and I had a little left, so I did the front door also. Right after my father's death in 1976, my mother, she painted the most beautiful butterflies. They were three for the Trinity um, on my bedroom wall as a child, and it was very comforting. Those butterflies stayed on my wall for at least 12 to 15 years, and my friends would come back even through my college years and look over at my bedroom wall and say, who did those? And all I could ever say is, my mother did those. What are you talking about? Ron has quite a background in music, being the son of uh, jazz musician Joe Westray out of Pittsburgh. And of course, that legacy has been handed right on down to my son. And quite, I would have to say, quite a musical background, yes. I'd like to think that there is a fair exchange of our sharing the art. And while I don't play a musical instrument and they may not paint, I think somehow it's all connected because, you know, music needs environment. Art needs music. Every now and then you're going to need some. Headrag, I guess it's an acronym, but it really means he adores righteousness and glory. Recently, I ventured out to strip my trees of old ivy vines, kudzu vines, and other type vines that grow out back. Thus, we have head rags written in its natural form. Well, you know, Allen University has a long history of artistic experiences, but one professor in general, Dr. Maceo, was very influential on what we'll call my crayon resistance techniques. But today I use the chalk and paint in combination as opposed to the tempera paint and crayon resistance. Stay on the chalk. It comes right off, no mess. You ever seen that written before in here? Stay on the chalk, because that way you know that you can change your mind. My career as a teacher spans quite a career, starting in Lexington One, where I spent 20 years there, and 20 years on this side as lead teacher of the Richland One's alternative program. The students were always amazed at her creativity. There was never a dull moment. Students are art, and you're going to always have those students that will respond to working artistically on projects, and you let them go, and you usually get a nice product. In order to put a copper glaze on some of my work, you have to start with a can that has already experienced a deep oxidation. 
I'm about to glaze this in a copper finish. I've already decided the areas that I want to, to use after my children ate many meals on it. I decided not to give it away. Don't need much. My mother reuses everything and when I say that, you have a lot of people that are hoarders or who just collect junk. That is not the case. The case is everything that she reuses has a purpose. I love metal. I love metal. It's enduring and given enough time, a metal structure can take other forms and withhold them. Most definitely it's recycling. I don't throw away things I've purchased. I keep that which is relevant for my use only. So much, so much recycling. Do you think you are metal? You know, I, I, I know that I'm related to trees. Trees are my favorite theme and that's what I paint. I do trees and flowers. I, I don't venture beyond that. It goes back to what I said about art being free. And of course nature is. Yes, I have one tree that actually writes. This is an old ivy vine. And it will join head rag in some configuration. Mom sees things that we don't. As I told mom last night, you know, you, you're way out. You, you're way out there. But I watched mom evolve from, you know, a, a mom buying Ataris and this kind of thing to where we are now, you know. So, like, like, like in nature, it moves so slowly that you don't realize the change. It's beautiful, you know, and it's rare and uh, uh, creates a lot of interesting conversation. You know, sometimes uh, as an artist, I'm in my own creative world, so sometimes mom catches me off guard with some of her discoveries uh, at a time where notes are swirling around my head as well. I can't say enough about just being around a creative person in spirit as my mother. She has truly impacted me and my children, her grandchildren. They always come to grandma's house and see something different. They're always asking, like I am to this day, how do you do this? When I see my mother's artwork, I see her. She is very fluid. She does not have a cookie cutter um, personality. Yeah, I, I keep the bristles fairly stiff, but I will loosen them out as I need that flexibility. With my mother's art, it's all about the effect and what she's trying to create. And so she's pulled from any resource around her home. Sometimes a brush won't do. The whole idea is to make the color really subtle and not try to show off the color. I just look at her and I take away a part of the art that says, let me be, let me express my freedoms. Art is liberty. I can paint on my walls. I can paint on my chest. I can paint on my face. I just can't expect everyone to accept that beautiful expression for themselves. But you know, liberty is, wise, is a wise choice. It's not just being free to do something.